may know um, or may not that I am, I absolutely positively love musical theater. Um, and one of my favorite shows is Fiddler on the Roof. And in Fiddler on the Roof, Tevia and Golda, the mother and father, celebrate the Sabbath with their five daughters and their older daughter's boyfriends. And the last verse they sing as they celebrate is, May the Lord protect and defend you. May the Lord preserve you from pain. Favor them, O Lord, with happiness and peace. Oh, hear our Sabbath prayer. Amen. This is a modern version of the prayer that is said as part of the evening ritual that ushers in the Sabbath. It calls upon God to protect them from harm. And in the same way, this passage from John, Jesus is praying for those he is leaving behind. He's asking God to protect them, and by extension, us. He says, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. But he doesn't leave it there. He reminds them and us of several things. He has given us God's word. And interestingly, Jesus says he's not asking God to take them or us out of the world, but to protect us from the evil one. It's a reminder that we are to be in the world, but not of the world. We have been made holy, sanctified through God's spirit, and therefore Jesus sends us into the world. So in order to understand really what's happening here um, and how we can apply it, we need to get the bigger picture. Bible commentaries and New Testament professors call chapters 13 through 16 in John's Gospel, Jesus' farewell discourse. So what does that mean? Well, John spends a lot of time before Jesus goes to Jerusalem to be condemned to death, preparing his disciples. He teaches them, and he says goodbye to them. He is preparing them, hopefully, for a time when he will not be there in person. He's giving them the tools to live in a new way. Remember, Jesus taught a way of grace, a way of love and acceptance, and he taught that in the face of a world that will reject him and his teaching. What we have here is a very long prayer, and Jesus continues to tell his disciples and us of everything that they need to remember. He's encouraging them to have confidence and hope even in the face of his imminent suffering and death. Both they, the faithful hearers of John's gospel, ancient and modern, listen in as Jesus talks to his disciples. As Easter people, we live on this side of the resurrection, so we are encouraged not to dwell on the feelings of abandonment and despair that the disciples probably felt as they followed Jesus to Jerusalem, to the cross, and to the grave. But we are called upon to hope, to keep that assurance of Jesus' continuing presence. Thursday was Ascension Day. That's the day when we remember when Jesus leaves the disciples. And now we hear these words of support. This central prayer that we have for our lesson for this weekend offers prayers and hopes and dreams by Jesus for us. And there were three themes that were outlined in an article in Working Preacher, and I really like them, so I'm kind of using them to kind of sculpt this a little bit. And the themes that they said were present were extravagant giving, knowing that we belong, and sent into the world. Extravagant giving is one of the most important themes that we have in this passage. Now, when we think of giving, what's the first things that come to mind when you're in church? 
is stewardship, right? Not wrong, but that's not what we have here. Did you pay attention to Jesus' language throughout the passage? The words give or gave occur nine times in these few verses. But if you look at the context, it's not what we give Jesus. Rather, the emphasis is on what God has given us through Jesus. Both the Father and the Son are givers. And because they have given us a way to live, we know how to live as children of God. Because of the grace of God, through Christ Jesus, we are given that new way to live. That giving goes from Father to Son to us. And it always kind of reminds me, when I think of this passage, of Luther's understanding of the first article of the Apostles' Creed. What Luther says is, I believe that God has made me and all creatures. He has given me my body, my soul, eyes, ears, all my members, my reason, my senses. He has also given me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all I need to support this life. He defends me from all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. That's extravagant giving. And that's what God has given us. Another point is to kind of pay attention to those things which are given. Immediately we hear that the followers of Jesus know themselves to belong to Jesus Christ. To know ourselves as part of the body of Christ is to know who we are and whose we are. It is to know that we are not abandoned by God. We are not left alone. We don't suffer alone. We are God's beloved. Listen to what Jesus says in this passage. If we ask who are the ones about whom Jesus prays so earnestly just prior, it is those whom you gave me from the world. That's the disciples. But that's also us. We are those whom God has brought through the Holy Spirit to the church, to the body of Christ, to become a child of God. And part of knowing that is knowing to whom we belong. The disciples and we have been given the gift of knowing who God is because we see God in Jesus Christ. Jesus says he guarded them while he was on earth. And that's kind of a shorthand for all that God has done. We also hear that the followers have been given the word. They have been protected in the name precisely because they have been given the word. Now, word is really an interesting term in John's gospel because if you go back to the very beginning of John's gospel, to what we call the prologue of John's gospel, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then a little bit later, we are told that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We are meant to understand word in kind of a double sense. We have the word of God in the Bible, in the stories that we have learned, the stories that are handed down to us. But we also have the word, which is Jesus Christ. And that kind of helps us unpack what Jesus is saying here. Because first, Jesus has given us the words. You gave me the words, and I gave it to them. So we have the words of the prophets, we have the words of Jesus, and we have Jesus as the word. We've received and accepted those words, and in receiving and accepting the words of God and the word Jesus, we become children of God. 
And as ones who have received Christ, we know the truth. Because we know who Christ is. And we know who God is. And so to respond in that way is to know to whom we belong. And once we know to whom we belong, because of the Father's name, because of who the Father is and what God has given us in Christ Jesus, we know ourselves to be made holy, to be sanctified. And to be made holy is not to be separate from the world, rather to live in and minister to the world. As you have sent me, so I send them. Jesus is talking about the disciples and us. In spite of the risk, because of the Father's love, we are sent into the world. Reminder, we live in the world when we don't belong to it. Because you see, the world, in John's view, is oddly two places. First, it's a place that doesn't know God and rejects the word, just as Jesus will be rejected once he goes to Jerusalem. But we also know that there are people in the world today who reject the word. I read recently that there are some who label themselves Christian who reject the Sermon on the Mount because it's too woke. They reject God's word in both senses. But the problem is we can't leave it there. And the world is the mission field. And that's where we were sent, to speak God's word, to know about God's love, to share God's love with one another. So the disciples and we don't abandon those who don't know God's word, but we go into that mission field so that we can share God's word, God's word of love and grace and also what Christ has done for us. The word become flesh. So as we move from Easter to Pentecost, I want us to remember that belonging to God as a beloved child of God, we are recipients of God's extravagant gift of grace. But we have been given that gift so that we can go into the world to tell the world of God's love, God's grace, God's mercy. Amen. Amen.